It's the evening before I go camping, which means obviously the last spell is going to have a huge update in the beta branch. So we're going to take a minute to talk about it. Uh, there's a lot to cover, and I'm pretty excited about the changes, but this is going to be the economy and panic rework on the beta branch. So they start off and give us a little bit of information about what's been kind of going on. The fact that the player base is pretty frustrated with the way that the economy is behaving and that production buildings haven't been particularly well received. If you've watched any of my content, you know that I still like to use production buildings. I think they are part of the fun of the game, regardless of whether they're the dominant strategy. I think a lot of people are playing lean heavily on the shop, go hard on generating tons and tons and tons of gold, and then just reroll endlessly until you find the pieces of the puzzle that you need. But anyways, uh, clearly this is part of a larger update. They talk about the fact that they can't balance things in a vacuum, but that they are interested in experimenting more with the way that panic works, and they feel that panic is very much tied to the economy. The two are kind of inextricably linked. And they also mention that this is laying the foundation for the larger meta progression rework that they have planned. So there's three major things that we're going to talk about today that were part of the patch. There is the gold mine and scavenger camp rework. There are there's the panic rework, and then there's just some tweaks to character attribute progression and perks that we'll talk a little bit about. So gold mine and scavenger camps at uh, at the very highest level. A lot of people are doing what I end up doing, which is the first night they're selling helmets, they're selling pants in order to get that gold mine put up and ideally upgraded to the point where it's generating 25 gold per night. And this makes the beginning of the game feel like the tolerances are really, really narrow, which makes the beginning of the game, among other things, feel not particularly fun because you're always doing exactly the same thing. You're always making huge sacrifices. So they want to loosen the economy earlier and they want to make the economy run out of control slightly less aggressively in the end game. So how are they doing that? Uh, first of all, they're making gold mines more expensive. Wait, what? <laughs> so uh, they're doing that because they're essentially removing that first tier upgrade that goes from 10 gold per night to 25 gold per night. So all gold mines will produce 25 gold baseline every night, but they will cost 60 gold to make. Then the first production upgrade is going to cost 60 and it's going to increase the amount of gold generated by 25 to 35. This is very interesting. Uh, this particular dynamic means that it's always going to make sense to build another gold mine and get 25 gold per night rather than upgrading the production on a gold mine, which only get nets you 10 gold per night. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember what the maximum number of gold mines you can produce is, but I guess now you're going to be building as many gold mines as you can. The mine plus and mine plus plus increase are going to first reduce the number of workers because now it's going to cost two workers rather than one to uh, activate your gold mine and then uh, mine plus plus is going to give you two uses so that means in total for two workers the most gold you can get out of a gold mine is 70 at fully upgraded and it appears that the 55 gold per night is completely gone from gold mines which means the end game you're not going to be drowning in money quite so aggressively scavenger camps are getting a similar rework so they're going to produce more by default but cost a bit more uh, production plus is going to generate a bunch more uh, materials and then scavenge plus and scavenge plus plus are going to do the same thing first you're going to be able to do it for one worker then you're going to be able to do it twice the only thing that i will say here is i think production plus and the base production could both be increased I kind of feel like the approach they should take now with scavenger camps is make them wildly overpowered and then scale things back. Because as we'll talk about with the panic update, I'm going to have a hard time figuring out where to spend materials now because wolves are going to start generating panic. Makes me very nervous, but we'll talk more about that in a second. Oh, speaking of the panic rework, here we are. Uh, so uh, the goal of the re this rework is to make panic less binary. I think this is a noble goal that may or may not work out, <laughs> and I'll explain more in a second, but at a very high level, I understand what they're saying, right? They have a letter grade system, 
uh, and they want people to be utilizing more of that spectrum, right? It isn't fun to get an S rank or it really doesn't matter type of thing. So what they're doing is they've added an item reward that is comparable to the item reward that you get now to the A rank and an even better item reward to the S rank. And they're trying to balance the game around S rank being very hard and A rank not being hard. I think that this is a good idea that is going to, the devil's going to be in the details because at the end of the day, especially with how difficult the last spell is at Apocalypse 5 and Apocalypse 6, uh, this is going to be really hard because the, that S rank being available is going to mean you're always going to want it because it's going to give you that little bit of an advantage that you're going to need because of how difficult the game gets at its highest difficulties. Speaking of, really quick aside, if you like the content that I'm putting out on Last Spell, please toss me a subscription, and also you can find tons of high apocalypse runs on my YouTube channel where this video is going live. So if you're looking for more information or how to learn the higher difficulties, we play it a lot. We uh, we just recently had our Apoc 6 Glenwall win. That should be on the channel now. But anyways, back to the panic rework. So first, panic increase. Uh, they're basically making it so that panic increase isn't a bad thing happens, you always get some panic, and there's more gradation now. So the way that they're doing this is any building inside the Haven will generate panic, including walls. I'm very nervous about this. We're going to have to see how much panic is generated by walls, but I'm worried that at the higher difficulties, walls are just going to become... Uh, something that you save up for and only build on the final night because if they're panic generators, it's going to be problematic. But at a high level, walls, barricades, and ruins are going to produce a tiny amount of panic. And, you know, only time will tell if that tiny amount of panic is okay or if it's going to be the difference between S rank and A rank on a regular basis. Uh, defenses, including ballistas and catapults, will now generate a moderate amount of panic. Town buildings high and the magic circle incredibly high. What this means at a high level from my perspective is that uh, panic is going to be slightly more aggressively generated and that's going to make those A, rank, A ranks more likely and those S ranks more uh, difficult to achieve. And I am worried that on higher difficulties or more aggressive play styles, walls are going to become not a viable strategy because you're going to end up losing A ranks. S ranks, excuse me. Another noteworthy change is uh, stunned monsters aren't going to generate panic, which I think is good. That will add a little bit more nuance to how you handle things, although I don't find myself stunning a lot unless I'm using two-handed hammers. And I think for two-handed hammers, this is going to make melees great defenders because you'll be able to leave some of those stunned mobs on the side for a turn and not worry too much about them. Great change here. Uh, so... As I mentioned before, S rank is going to be generating higher rarity items. A rank is going to be your commons through your rares. Uh, gold and material rewards have been rebalanced to fit the scale of the updated economy, which is expected to be less exponential. So I think this means you're getting less rewards from the S rank in terms of gold and materials. I'm a little worried about that. I think that those are very important, and if they're not being made up elsewhere, you're going to have a hard time. And uh, as... As was mentioned before, they are modeling the economic process, progress of the player around expected A ranks. So now on to just the change log. Uh, so first of all, houses, you go from being able to make five to being able to make four, and they are 25% cheaper, going from 40 gold to 30 gold. That's huge, as a side note. Uh, I think that's a very big change. Uh, and then the house expansion prices have been increased for the first one and decrease for the second one. I never did the second house uh, housing expansion. I may have to now because I usually built that, fi that fifth house. So we'll see how that comes out. But the decrease in cost is going to make that first night uh, significantly easier to balance around. Uh, production buildings. Uh, the armor maker, bowsmith, uh, magic shops, and blacksmith are all being reduced to 65. I think this is awesome. They were way too expensive. Uh, 90 and 80 gold respectively really hurt your wallet. And then alchemist and jeweler are going down to 75. Two big thumbs up for that. I think that's a great decision. It'll allow you to get them a little earlier. Uh, the production plus and production plus plus have both been 
increased uh, or decreased in cost, which I think is good. And then help similarly. I very rarely go for help. I kind of build these buildings and then sink any additional workers that I have into them. But generally, I have less workers than places to put them. Uh, production. They also removed the first level of production buildings. Uh, so there's now plus, 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 and plus, plus, plus. And they are 150, 300, and 560 in respect. And the buildings will now by default give plus one and plus two level gear, which is awesome. That means that they are going to be much more valuable out of the gate. And I think that is appropriate for when I usually start buying them, right? I get the seer first, and then I start thinking about production buildings, but probably after I get my fourth hero. Walls. Uh, so barricades are more expensive. I don't think I've ever built a barricade. Ah, that might not be entirely true, but very few times. Uh, reinforced uh, wooden walls are a little cheaper, and the stone walls and the reinforced stone walls are both cheaper with pretty significant health increases. That reinforced stone wall at 385 feels pretty substantial. So we're going to see how that plays out. But like I said, they're generating panic now. So that's going to be worrisome. I also, I don't think I mentioned it. I I glossed over it, but panic is going to be related to, I think, percentage of total health that is removed and how much health the thing has. So a full wall taking a hit should be an infinitesimally small amount of panic, but a wall being destroyed is going to be a larger amount of panic. Ballistas, a seasoned operator gets a little cheaper, which I think is probably going to be good because I think gold is going to be a bit scarcer. And then the accommodations in the inn for getting your fifth and sixth hero are each coming down by 50 and 60 gold respectively. Good changes, although I'm worried that these changes are less than the amount of scarcity that has been created by the gold. Now on to, to boss changes, because in addition to the economy and panic rework, they also made a bunch of changes to uh, the bosses. So uh, the harpies, they've changed the pacing up a little bit. Uh, Nothing too terribly crazy. The Harpy itself is getting a nerf in health, an increase in armor, and uh, Enraging Scream now only buffs move points by one. That was the buff that the boss Harpies gave to the baby Harpies. Uh, and then Resistance will now be debuffed on, I believe, the player characters, and uh, it no longer dispels negative alterations. So I... Minor changes. I have to play through the Harpies again to fully understand these changes. It's been a long time since I've done Gildenberg. Lakeburg I'm more familiar with. So uh, we have our favorite, uh, our favorite Loch Ness monster here, and they've improved the pacing of the fight again. Uh, instability, the invincibility phases have been completely removed from the fight. Thank goodness. Invincibility just felt awful. You were just kind of sitting there being like, okay, now what do I do? Uh, each phase now uh, features one of the three versions of the Loch Ness Monster, uh, making the fight, fight less repetitive, which I think is good, and the boss waves are now tougher, so we're going to be getting more random minions spawning on the perimeter. So big health buff to uh, uh, Satusia. Uh, 3,600 to 6,000. That's going to be fairly substantial. Uh, adding dodge is a little annoying, but the resistance and block decrease are going to be really good. So we're going to be hitting it harder, but we're also going to be having to go through a lot more health. Uh, I fear that things like Big Game Hunter are just still going to scale insanely well in this context. So like Big Game Hunter on a hand crossbow is just going to be a really good way to kill, uh, to kill uh, this boss. And then, uh, while not armored, uh, Satusia can use Putrid Water, uh, which was the, the big attack. So the so this is a change to the way that previously there was like a charging phase. I think the charging phase is going away because there's no invulnerability. Uh, Tail also gets a health buff, but also gets a bit of a resilience debuff. Uh, it won't be doing charged attacks, it appears. And then... Her armored version is no longer invincible, thank goodness, but has its own 6,000 hit points and 1,200 armor. So you're just going to have to plan to have a lot of damage on hand for when she pops up. 
And then the armored tail briefly disappeared, apparently. I didn't notice. I don't pay a lot of attention to the tail. Uh, now it's going to have 2,000 hit points, 1,200 armor. And uh, the enraged version, which is the final version, is going to use an enhanced version of putrid water. That's a little worrisome. That may push us in the direction of wanting more cleansing options because putrid water has a poison component to it. The wormlings have changed. So the wormling eggs now have 600 armor they didn't have before. And the resistance has been reduced to 60. I think this is good. The resistance just felt bad. If you had the wrong character there, you were like, oh, I'm hitting for 20. <laughs> I'm hitting for 7 type of thing. Uh, the wormlings also get a pretty big buff. Uh, 200 extra health, 300 armor, a little bit less dodge, a uh, little bit more resistance, and they are a little bit slower. For the most part, I ignore the worms. I don't think this is going to change significantly with these changes. The slowdown in particular makes them a little less scary. As for the Dryads, uh, now we're talking Glenwall, final boss. Uh, 15 to 12 Dryads seems more reasonable. 15 just felt like a lot. That last APOC uh, 5 run that I did, you just you lose count. I also wish that, I, that that this was included in the patch, but it's not. The way that the progress bar goes for the Glenwall Knight should essentially be a twelve-part counter that tells you which one you've which ones you've currently killed. Uh, and then the Druids are getting a little more, or the Dryads, excuse me, are getting a little more health, uh, an extra five hundred. I don't think that'll be a big difference maker, uh, but we will see. Now, this is about the character level ups and the gear attributes. So each of these paragraphs refers to a specific, uh, a specific attribute that you can get on your characters and how much you get from leveling up and how much you get from gear FXs. So resistance reduction is getting a decrease. Uh, you'll be getting basically 3% uh, less uh, on level up when you select... Uh, Resistance reduction at the highest tier, and the affixes similarly will be slightly less. Uh, I don't think this is a huge deal. I think that the difference between 15 and 12 is pretty minor in my eyes. All of these aren't huge. The accuracy one hurts, uh, this next one. The decreasing of the top end accuracy, getting 15 accuracy at top level on level up felt really good. 12, I'll still take it basically every time, but... Uh, but yeah, it was nice the way it was before, and same goes for gear that you're going to be getting. You're not going to be getting as much on gear. I think that one is particularly important because there were some times when I would just get pieces of gear with like 30 accuracy on them, and that was pretty incredible. Increasing opportunistic. Opportunistic is still in a weird place. I think they could have gone even further on this one. They went pretty far, but they could have gone even further and I'm not sure I would have taken it. The problem with opportunistic remains that it is a stat that you have to enable with another action. So it's not something that I like to invest in because sometimes you just don't have the opportunity on say a big enemy that is standing by itself to debuff it with one action and then start wailing on it. Uh, XP gain huge hit here. Uh, level ups used to give you 35% at the blue tier. Now they're giving 20%. Uh, feels feels rough, uh, but it was super out of whack and you had characters getting to insane levels. Uh, same goes for what you get from gear. At the top end, you're getting half as much experience from gear as you were previously. And then reliability, the 25% just felt insane. Every time I saw the blue 25%, I was like, I guess I should take it. But reliability is still in a weird place in the game where I'll take it as like a tier 3 stat, but I'm not that excited about it. Uh, almost ever. Even when I was getting it at 25%, I was like, eh. So I'm not sure this change was even warranted or needed. Uh, skill changes. Uh, decrease the two-hand axe berserker rage. This was the damage buff. Uh, it's now 2535 rather than 2550. Uh, they went a little bit crazy rescaling this. Honestly, I rarely use two-handed axes. I think they were not worth the equipment slot. And then potion of strength. Uh, appears to have gotten a minor damage buff, which I think is good. It's it's a potion that I so rarely use. I think you get more raw damage from a mana potion than you do from a potion of strength, just because you get an extra cast that's worth, you know, an extra cast of maybe a lightning bolt that's worth, you know, 300 on eight enemies or something like that. 
As for perks, uh, flexibility got nerfed. I think this is really sad. I think they just redid the damage overhaul and I don't think flexibility was out of whack and it was a really good way to push the player base to use diverse weapons. So, or diverse weapon combinations. Like I had a, a great run that was one hand crossbow and scepter. Super weird combination, worked really well for killing dryads. Uh, bodybuilder, this one blew my mind. Uh, this is a big buff to Bodybuilder, um, which I already think was very strong. I had uh, an organic tank on a run that I think had almost 600 hit points and was hitting like an absolute monster thanks to Bodybuilder. So Bodybuilder goes from 1% every 15 to 1% every 10. So that is a 33% increase in your scaling of physical damage based on health and it starts earlier at 100 health rather than 115. Seems like a huge buff. I wouldn't be surprised if they rolled that one back because I think Bodybuilder on organic tanks is insane. And then Harvester, every three enemies killed is now every four enemies killed. Harvester is still an instant lock. I don't think this changes anything. And if there's one design principle that I think needs to come in a future update, I'll probably put this as a, as a suggestion uh, in the last spell suggestions forum, but they need to take mana and separate it from the magic tree. Right now, the magic tree is about half doing more damage with magic and half generating more mana. But mana is not a resource that is unique to magic users. Everybody needs mana. So I think what they need to do is they need to create a optional column in the perk tree, just like there's poison and defensive, and put the mana attributes there or sprinkle the mana attributes into those three columns on the right that are like the generic column. And put all the mana stuff there so everyone has access to it, and then make the magic user tree about uniqueness for magic users, right? Maybe put some magic-specific propagation in there, or increased magic damage like critical runes and things like that. But right now, it's all about mana. Mana isn't about... Mana and magic are not synonymous. So. That's a bit of an aside, but I think that's really important. On to bug fixes. Uh, so Berserker Rage Kill uh, couldn't be cast on heroes. That's been fixed. Uh, fix a soft lock happening with the Oracalcum. Never go there. Uh, fixed Potion Throw. We had a problem with that on uh, the ill-fated run that we had uh, this last week uh, that never really made it to YouTube, unfortunately. Uh, change the text for magic damage flavor to be accurate. That's fine. Fixed legendary assassin perk that was not displaying the right amount of enemies to kill. Seems good. Or a calcum can now be opened in the world map. Uh, this is useful just for leveling up without having to go into a game. Uh, fixed another soft lock. And the fatality, fatality skill cannot be used on invincible units anymore. So whoever figured that out is a, is a hero. Uh, but anyways, that does it for the patch. I'm super excited about this update uh, to the beta branch. I think it's going to be a lot of good changes. I hope that the panic changes with walls and stuff like that doesn't become too disruptive. But uh, yeah, I'm super excited this coming Tuesday to get back into the last spell and, uh, and try out these new changes. But for now, that's been it. If you want to talk more about this stuff, the patch notes, your thoughts on the design of the game, strategies, etc., we have a Discord. It's linked down below. Uh, feel free to come join us, and uh, basically that's it for me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and uh, happy hunting. Bye-bye.